God man, the word made flesh by doctor. George W. Carey and Inez Eudora Perry. This book was copyrighted by God and the beginning and tells about the word of God without which not anything was made. Dedicated to the God in thee, O woman, O man, for thou art God man. 1920 The revolutionary planet, Uranus, entered the zodiacal sign Pisces, the fishes, in January. 1920. Uranus is from a Greek word meaning heaven. The hour has struck that opens the door for a new dispensation for man, and the standing prophecy, proclaimed, trumpet tongued, down through the ages, is now being fulfilled. The old order is dying amidst its worshippers. God's loosened thunders shake the world. Across the lurid sky the war birds scream. Earth's millions die. Fear and woe are unutterable. The fires of purification are lighted. Into the cosmic melting pot has been cast hate, race prejudice, selfishness, and the devils of greed. The towers of superstition and tyranny are falling. The thrones and scepters of kings lie scattered and crushed along the highway of nations. Pride has fallen from its insecure pinnacle of shame. The rich are terror-stricken. Their silver has been cast into the street. Their gold has been removed from them. The merchants of the earth weep and mourn, for no man buyeth their merchandise. The churches are in panic. The liquor power rages. The gambler is terror-stricken. The grafting politician seeks a hiding place and finds none. The briber flees when no man pursueth. The priest and preacher pray, but no help comes, for they, too, must be judged. The harlot alone seems unafraid, because she is not a hypocrite, and has heard the words, the harlots will enter the kingdom before you. Mankind has gone to the limit of animalism. The soul walks forth, naked and ashamed. It is high noon of the judgment day. Written in 1916. Redemption, the ultimate goal of humanity. Taoism, man consisting of a trinity of spirit, mind and body, cometh forth from the eternal, and after putting off desire re-enters the glory of Tao. Brahmanism, man's inner self is one with the self of the universe and to that universe and to that unity it must return in the fullness of time. Buddhism, man, fundamentally divine, is held in the three worlds by desire. Purification from desire leads the man to nirvana. Hebrewism, man came into being through emanation from the will of the king, therefore is divine. Egyptian, teaches the divinity of man, Osiris, as his source. Zoroastrianism, man is a spark of the universal flame to be ultimately united with its source. Orphic, man has in him potentially the sum and substance of the universe. Christian, man made in the image of God body, soul and spirit a trinity. The kingdom at hand. M.A.N. is within one step of his ideal, the ultimate goal of his desires, that realm of freedom where he will no longer be subject to law, but, being led by the Spirit, will realize that he, himself, is an operator and attribute of the law. Man is law in action. 
Will man now take the final step into complete liberty and become a god? Or continue to eat of the husks of dual concept and still cower beneath the lash of precedent and authority? There is no salvation or regeneration for man as long as he believes in vicarious atonement. The man who needs saving by that process is not worth the price. Recognition of eternal unity will save man from the idea that he needs saving, because it will reconcile him to his place and mission in the plan the great necessity. It will reveal to him his true kinship to the causeless cause, the beginningless beginning, and he will know that he is an attribute of universal energy from which all forms, thoughts, motions, sounds, colors, and so-called good and evil, proceed. In the full light of this wisdom, man will not search for personal saviors, nor quibble about the meaning of the words of men who died thousands of years ago. Jesus, Christ, Truth, Life forever preaches the sermon in the ear of man, Lo, I am with you now. He that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, the same is an antichrist. Only the spiritually blind look for the coming of truth, or life, the Christ who is ever-present, or for the coming of a kingdom which is already at hand. When ye pray for a thing, know that ye have it now. If we accept a certain statement uttered, as an ultimatum, by someone who lived in the dim past, we may be called upon to reconcile the utterance with another opinion, spoken or written by the same person, which seems to contradict previous statements in which we have placed our trust. These persons, being dead, cannot be asked for an explanation in regard to the seeming contradiction. If they could, they might respond, as Walt Whitman did when a critic hinted that the You Good Grey poet contradicted himself, Do I contradict myself? Then I contradict myself. I am large. I contain multitudes. We must consider the facts that the opinions uttered by men in past ages extend over a period of years, during which time empires rose and fell and new concepts of life, due to planetary and zodiacal changes, obtain recognition. Thus radical changes occurred in the social, religious, scientific, and industrial world. Viewing the question in this light, need we wonder that the seers and sages, saints and scientists, of the past should sometimes contradict themselves. Are we, today, so very consistent? Do we not enact what we call sacred laws, immediately violate them and carry the case to the court of last resort and get the sacred law repealed? We have had high and low tariff, by metallism and gold standard, and our great statesmen valiantly upheld the free coinage of silver in the year 1895, and in 1896 these same captains of finance declared through the public press that free coinage of silver would destroy civilization, tear down the pillars of Hercules, and wrench the stars from their cosmic thrones. We have contradicted ourselves in our opinion, of the Earth's shape, the distance to the Sun, the origin and operation of electricity, the cause of light, the divisibility of elemental gases, the circulation of the blood, the reality of hell and the devil and other subjects too numerous to mention. 
Then, shall we forever wrangle over the contradictory statements of dead men who wrought in their day as best they might with the light and data at their command, with no thought that people in future ages would war to the death or live with hate in their hearts? for books rejected by the Council of Nicaea, and other ancient books, books of the Koran Persia, Hebrew meaning Passover, Esther, Solomon, Egyptian Book of the Dead, Adam, Eve, Enoch, Seth, Seventh Book of Moses, Saint, Thomas the Doubter, Nicodemus, Tom Hotep, the oldest book known, the Kabbalah, Again, the researches of such theological scholars as James Legg, L. L. D., first professor of Chinese at Oxford University, Prof. W. M. Jennings, P. H. D., and Honorable Clement Allen of the Royal Asiatic Society besides several hundred who might be named, embracing the leaders of thought along lines of original sources, all agree that hundreds, if not thousands, of ancient manuscripts, tablets, and carvings indubitably prove that all races of all people that have ever inhabited the earth have striven, as best they could, to leave records of the chemistry and physiology of their own bodies. Science, Egyptology, Indo-Iranian, Chinese, Japanese, Persian, or Sanskrit, all, all, forever strove to solve the riddle of the human body. 700 years B. C. We have the Shu King, China's oldest book, the Shi King, 600 B. C. The Yikima, 1143 B. C. Then came Confucius, 551 478 B. C. The writings, statements, Philosophy and symbols of these witnesses of the truth of being corroborates our 66 witnesses in every detail. The writers of this book have in their possession a library of the ancient scriptures referred to above and know whereof they speak. But, as printing and bookmaking is well nigh prohibited by cost, we feel that we are not justified in lengthy quotations. Again, nothing really new can be added after the knee plus ultra statement. There is no other way under heaven whereby ye may be saved except Jesus, Christed and crucified. However, for the information of our readers, we will give the table of contents of volume 14 of the sacred books and early literature of the East, entitled The Great Rejected Books. 1. The Books of Adam and Eve, The Lives of Adam and Eve, The Apocalypse of Moses, The Slavonic Book of Eve. 2. The Writings Attributed to Enoch. The Great Prophetic Book of Enoch, The Lost Book of Noah. 3. The Apocalypse of Baruch, His Vision of Heaven. 4. The Story of Ahikar, The Old Armenian Version, The New Found Ancient Book. The New Testament Apocrypha. 5. The Gospels of Christ's Childhood, The Provangelium or original Gospel of James, Gospel of Thomas the Doubter, the Gospel of Pseudo-Matthew, and Arabic Gospel of the Infancy. 6. The Gospels of Nicodemus, the Greek Gospel of Nicodemus, 
a later gospel, the harrowing of hell, the acts of Pilate, the letters of Pilate.